Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on July 25th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do. It has been a while, but I'm back. Here we are looking at the last 48 hours of our sun, images of our sun, 304 angstroms showing a few C-class solar flares and as well an M-class over the past two days. Nothing major thwarted our way. We did have quite the large backside eruption showing a large CME taking off from the backside. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, we do have quite a large sunspot region cresting into view. Looking at on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, plasma prominence developing. Looking at the last 48 hours outgoing, this is where we've seen a lot of action from these sunspot regions turning away. Watch for those to keep erupting on the backside and most likely visit us again soon. Having a look at the multi-spectrum, this is what our sun has been doing for the last 48 hours. No major plasma filaments, but there was about three days ago that gave us a glancing blow. Looking at coronal hole regions, no major coronal hole regions. Looking at our another light here of our sun. Some amazing images brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Mixed here with daily events worldwide. And I want to thank you all for watching and tuning in today to stay aware and prepared with all of our space weather events, earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Having a look at a sunspot regions right here. We have about seven that are earth facing and a few of them are quite big and the one cresting into view is very big. So heads up, stay tuned and keep you updated. Space weather conditions. Currently we are under R1 minor radio blackout impacts expected. Looking at our solar winds, we're sitting at 436 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux remains in the heightened sea range after popping off an M-class solar flare this morning, early this morning, and those are the major events for the past two days. Solar proton flux has jumped and geomagnetic activity sitting at KP3. And having a look here at the absorption map, showing the highest frequency affected regions around the world, and it looks like the northern hemisphere definitely getting zapped, southern hemisphere a little bit, and then mid-Atlantic, Long duration. Looking at the ISWA space prediction spiral, showing the most recent CME taking off. Outgoing position. So nothing heading our way, but we are expecting some space weather here towards the end of the month. Thanks to M-class solar flare and as well active sunspot regions. Having a look here at Alaska 2, showing the last seven days of events. That most recent eruption was our last large M-class solar flare. But watch as we get into the 23rd, into the 25th. This is where we see the halo CME projected towards us on the 24th. Right there. So that was an Earth-facing CME taking off on the 24th. And quickly will be arriving to us. Having a look at earthquakes here the last 24 hours. Starting out here with the largest magnitude earthquake. A 5.6 Mariana Islands. 372 kilometer depth. Pretty deep for that region. The deepest part of our ocean. The Marianas Trench. As well a deep earthquake there. Batang, Indonesia. Philippines seeing a lot of activity. And as well Tobilo, Indonesia. Deep earthquake here, deepest the past 24 hours, 565 kilometer depth in the Tonga region, 4.5. Activity is south of Kamchatka there, erupting volcanoes through Kamchatka. Alaskan Peninsula seeing some activity and increasing activity the past 24 hours. Sitting just under 200 earthquakes in the 24 hour period, according to USGS and across the North American plate, nothing much to report. Notable earth, earthquake there, South Carolina, 2.5. South America, quiet, has been very quiet as of late. 
and as well a 5.5 magnitude earthquake was registered in central Turkey this morning and as well a 4.2 in more Iran. 4.4 there, Myanmar. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes, not really showing too much and showing here the last seven days for shakers across the world. We haven't really seen a large magnitude earthquake since the central Ecuador, uh, Central America in Ecuador region. 6.5, I believe that was. So expecting larger earthquakes here in the next couple days. It's just been way too quiet across the world. That's the last seven days for shakers across the planet. Heads up, stay safe, stay aware and prepared. And be ready. Having a look at the Pacific Disaster Center, showing satellite imagery from around the world. Quite a disastrous situation there in Nova Scotia with the atmospheric river affecting them. Also going to be noting here the most recent volcanoes. There are a lot of thunderstorms, landslides being reported as well through China. Looking at Ubinas in Peru, Nevada to Ruiz in Colombia. And look at all these landslide reports coming out of Eastern Asia. As well, Vietnam. Monsoon rains are just killer this year so far. Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected. Look at all those landslides. As well, Typhoon Doxuri, which is a pretty strong typhoon. We've got Sangay in Ecuador. Popocatetl in Mexico. Uluwan in Papua New Guinea. As well, Mayan in the Philippines. Ebico in Russia. Fuego, Guatemala, Semeru, Indonesia. So that's about 11 volcanoes getting updated in the past 24 hours. Quick glance around the rest of the world here for satellite imagery. Some big systems in the Northern Hemisphere still taking a track towards Alaska. But a lot of moisture coming in through BC. Typhoon Doxuri, right now a Category 3 typhoon, just grazing the northern islands of the Philippines, heading towards Taiwan. Looking across Africa, stormy conditions, central regions, daily evaporation rains, no major hurricanes developing through the central Atlantic right now. But yeah, that was quite a vigorous system that brought waves upon waves of moisture across North America. Having a look here at air quality index, some pretty sizable eruptions coming off of Eastern Russia at Kamchatka. Watching for that SO2 to head into Alaska this week. And as well, lots of wildfire smoke sweeping across North America, down into the United States. Wildfires are still burning in parts of BC and Alberta. Looking at the other higher concentration for SO2 coming out of South, A South Africa, notable. And as well, a lot of pressure being released. Iran. Now let's get to weather here for the next little bit. Brought to you by Windy.com. Unstable air mass sweeping across eastern United States. High pressure ridge building in. And then a few lows here developing Sunday into Monday, moving out of the Pacific Northwest. Ahead, we've got a heat wave, some extreme warm temperatures coming from the Gulf, 41 degrees Celsius without the humidex. So stay safe, stay hydrated over the next four or five days as we have an extreme heat warning for most of the United States. Having a look here at long range forecast, no major hurricanes developing, but pretty big system coming in for Eastern Canada. Overlooking Europe and Africa, pretty strong low in the North Atlantic, bringing in waves of moisture across Central Europe. And then another strong low moving through Eastern Europe and up into Russia. But lots of moisture here forecast for all of Europe over the next few days. And then overlooking the West Pacific, Australia, and Asia. Watching the track of Typhoon Doxuri. 
Australia is going to be very dry over this next little bit. No major systems coming to you. But watch in the long range as we will have another typhoon developing in the West Pacific heading into the South China Sea. That is a look now at the most recent forecast. That is going to be a super typhoon. Stay safe, stay aware and prepared, and please share this video and information with the world. Thank you all for watching. Much love, stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun, and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.